about four courses with Professor Durrani. She's an incredible professor. Her dedication to learning about patriarchal and teaching about patriarchal and systemic violence perpetuated by white supremacist um, country institution has changed the way I understand the world and how I understand my own history. Um, and her ability to teach and make students feel welcomed and at ease is admirable. Um, so I'm here to review her letter. Um, Eric is about to send out an email to certain students. Um, if you get the email from Nicole Rodriguez, just feel free to forward it to whoever's here. Um, sorry I wasn't able to distribute it to everyone. Um, but yeah, I'm here to review her letter of resignation. We just post it on her Instagram and on her, um, on her door in KJ office. Um, so yeah, yeah, sorry. So I've highlighted a lot of key words and words that are, have been used so often that many people have forgotten um, or don't know what the meaning is anymore. And understanding the key terms is important to understanding her letter and why it's so powerful. So the first letter, the first word I've highlighted is equitable. This just means fair and impartial. However, this is what Hamilton College failed to give Professor Durrani. The second word I highlighted is harassment, which is the aggressive pressure or intimidation. Again, what Durrani experienced here. The second word is, the third word is gaslighting. This means to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. Finally, I've also highlighted target harassment. This means the verbal or physical a verbal physical harassment that demeans or shows hostility or aversion toward an individual because of his or her race, color, religion, gender, national origin, age, disability, or because of retaliation and engaging protected activity. These words show the systemic nature that ultimately pushed Professor Durrani outside of Hamilton College. Um, from here on, I've also highlighted, a few, uh, highlighted Professor Durrani's article an infographic should have been distributed. Um, that may, no one, not everyone may have gotten one, but it ultimately, ultimately through this, she demonstrates how white supremacist groups have techniques that are very intentional and create an environment that is unsafe and restricted to academics. Um, so following her article, I really wanna highlight three institutions that she highlights in her own resignation letter. The three ones are Campus Reform, Campus Watch, and Alexander Hamilton Institute. So starting off with Campus Reform, um, that began to target Professor Durrani after she sent an email promoting Lahore Bajestein, with who teaches about critical race, post-colonial, and gender theories. If anyone attended that talk, it was a very powerful, and fun, and informative talk. Um, and ultimately, I, so I copied their tab um, from their website, which says, as a conservative watchdog to the nation's higher education system, campus reform exposes liberal bias and abuse on the nation's ca college campuses. Our team of professional journalists will work alongside student activists and student journalists to report on the conduct and misconduct of campus administrators, faculty, and students. So in this, I've highlighted two words. I've highlighted report and misconduct. Campus watch, Campus reform doesn't report, they target. And this is done through surveillance and decontextualization. Um, in Professor Sarani's article, um, Auto Digital Infrastructures of the Outrage Machine and Auto Ethnography of Targeted Faculty Harassment, she discusses how surveillance is very much a way to patrol what professors are uh, pursuing. And many of these organizations decontextualize what they're doing. This invalidates a, a scholar's work. The second word I chose, the second word I decided to highlight is misconduct. Misconduct can support this challenging white supremacist harmful practices. Um, following campus reform, I want to discuss Alexander Hamilton Institute. For many who are unfamiliar, this is an institute that exists down the hole, I mean <laughs> down the hill. Um, and they highlight they highlight or they describe themselves as an institute for the study of Western civilization. Western civilization is how American history is already, already very much taught. By, per, by promoting a narrative of Western civilization, this recenters American and Eurocentric history. This ignores non white histories and often glorifies these very violent countries. AHI continues to promote neoliberal ideology as highlighted in their biography. They write, 
Inspired by Alexander Hamilton's life and work, the AHI was created to help cultivate a generally free market of a marketplace of ideas and promote excellence in scholarship through the study of freedom, democracy, and capitalism. Ultimately, what they promote is very harmful for people and for it as an institution. There's a clear connection that they have with the Koch brothers, which is a white right wing organization, and this is something that we have to unpack. AHI received funding from the Koch brother. AS, AHI receives funding from the Koch brother. Source Watch identified six times the foundation. Six times the foundation donated to AHI. You Koch, a project dedicated to transparency, revealed how the Koch brother used their capital wealth to influence <coughs> knowledge produced on college campuses. They used their power to promote neo, neoliberal capitalist ideologies. I've highlighted, I've attached 10, their 10 principles. What their 10 principles ultimately highlight um, is the emphasis on prioritizing capital wealth as a freedom, and this reveals how capital wealth is prioritized over the well-being of people. This ideology is harmful and repeated multiple times through the principle, through the, throughout the principle. They also say um, the relation between economic freedom and political freedom, which allows the economic market essentially to regulate politics and use money as a way to make decisions regarding our lives. The second point that I really want to uh, that I really want to highlight within the principles is principle number eight, which highlights the role of the United States as a world power. This continues, this continues the role of the US as an imperial power prioritizing US as a white supremacist power. Finally, there are two professors who still remain to be very closely tied to AHI. These two professors are Professor of History Douglas Ambrose and Professor of American History Maurice Isserman. The next, the next institution I want to highlight is Campus Watch. I've highlighted two of their two of their um, phrases here. I've highlighted aim to improving them. Them being Middle East studies within American campuses. The clear idea, there is a clear idea of what they mean by improving. This means to allow to perpetuate xenophobic and anti-Muslim rhetoric. What they do is they gather, aka target, and makes this information available. By making this information available, they just sometimes simply take, place the article on the website and place the putting the people who are in the article at risk as well as the authors at risk. It really allows them to target academics that push against racist and white supremacist ag agendas. One way they do this is by featuring a section called Howlers of the Month. These are academics who challenge US power. By, by creating them Howlers of the Month, they invalidate the scholarship that they are producing. Um, so finally, Durrani cites the New York State Amendment. Here she, the, okay, finally Durrani cites the New York State Amendment, which removed severe and pervasive standards, allowing more action to be taken against harmful institutions. However, Hamilton College did not remove this statement. This allows harmful behavior from Campus Watch, Campus Reform, and AHI to continue. Professors are not protected against targeted ha uh, harassment and can't pursue their field of study. This doesn't allow protection for our professors. And ultimately, I want to end with that. I want to end with saying that this letter is important to understanding the systemic violence that Professor Durrani experienced at Hamilton College. However, it's also important to note that this is not an isolated event. Professor Durrani's experience is not an anomaly. Many professors have left Hamilton College because of the white supremacist ideology that's upheld and protected here. While Hamilton College may push different reasons for resignation, it ultimately comes down that this is a toxic place for faculty of color. The lack of protection against targeted harassment reveals Hamilton College's resistance to challenging neoliberal ideology. Instead, Hamilton, Co uh, Hamilton College chooses to tokenize its faculty and students of color and only accepts them when it is convenient for the college. Thank you.